Change. All three major averages are higher today, while the 10-year yield is at its low. It's at 385, and this after PPI came in light, but it was sinking even ahead of that, and we get CPI in the morning. Will the surprise cooling be enough to rev up the rate cuts to maybe a half point at this Fed's September meeting? One of my next guests isn't so sure. Joining me now to discuss, Kathy Bosjancic is Nationwide Mutual's chief economist, and Charlie Babrinskoy, he's Ariel Investments. Boy, so Char I, Charlie, you're not a Starbucks or a Chipotle guy, right? I mean, I see you. I heard Melody this morning. You, you, you steer clear, correct? I'm very frugal. I'm from the Warren Buffett School of Spending, which means we buy Folgers every morning in my <laughs> household for, uh, for about 50 cents a cup. Uh, Smucker's owns Folgers, by the way, which is a core portfolio company for us. So you're going to put me on the cheap side of that equation. You know, I had a feeling, but I didn't want to assume because you're also the sphere guy. So, I'm like, you know, I, I can never figure you out. Um, what does all of this mean? Uh, please tell us what you th as for what is go going on and playing out in the economy right now. And I mean, really, the PPI and the falling yields and people are all all excited now that we could be heading towards three and a half and mortgage rates are going to fall. And, and anyway, what are your thoughts? A couple of things. One is that we obviously got a scare uh, last week when people thought that jobs number meant we were in a, what uh, Krubman called a pre-recessionary environment. We don't think we're in a pre-recessionary environment. If anything, we think there's pent up demand. So we think we're going to still have that soft landing that starts with a cut in September. There is the danger that the Fed uh, continues to act irrationally and doesn't cut rates, and that wouldn't be good. But if we get what we expect, which is a start of a rate cut, that's going to be positive. The other thing that's very important is the shape of the yield curve. Everybody talks about rates coming down. The 10-year is actually not that crazy at its current levels in the high threes. What's crazy is a short-term rate above five. And so what we're going to get is short-term rates coming down, a re reversion to a more normal yield curve, a positively slip yield curve is going to be good for banks and investment banks, and that's going to help the broad market. Yeah, the only thing in the back of my mind always is that old nugget about how, you know, you want to, by the time the curve disinverts, the recession has already started. Um, but again, I mean, I look around I, and I agree with you. I, I don't know if, I, Kathy, I'll ask you, are we, I mean, are we in recession well, hi, Kelly. Um, no, we're not currently in recession. Um, you know, the, the consumer, labor market, uh, even GDP growth are all strong enough to, to keep us well into positive territory for now. Um, but I would agree that if the Federal Reserve doesn't, you know, start to get going on the rate cuts and um, more rather than less, then, you know, we would have less confident confidence in the soft landing. That is our baseline view. But I would say we have a softer soft landing uh, profile right now. Um, I would say that there's not a lot of, you know, where I would disagree with Charlie is there's not a lot of pent up demand. I think consumers went on a pretty strong spending spree for the last couple of years and the tailwinds of pandemic savings and relying on more on credit, you know, that's drying up and, and the savings have dried up. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, now you have to see consumer spending in line with income. And, and if the labor market continues to slow, that, that's going to put a crunch on consumer spending. Right. But if it doesn't continue to slow, this is where I've read notes from David Zervos and others who are like, then stocks are going to take off because they're going to say, OK, as long as there's enough labor income to sustain consumer spending, forget if there's anything else to tap. But, you know, this whole day, this party can keep going. Oh, yeah. If the labor market remains strong, and again, that is our, our baseline, is that we kind of skirt by the, a recession. Um, but that's, you know, it's a pretty... It's dependent on the Fed easing the monetary policy restrictiveness they have in place right now. If you look at their own Fed Taylor rules and their own estimates, even as of February, they were 100 basis points too tight on the Fed funds rate. And since then, inflation's receded more and the unemployment rate's gone up. So I think the market's, you know, expecting 100, 125 basis points. That just gets you back to neutral. So I, I think, you know, I don't think the Fed's going to start with 50. I think they'll start 25. But I would feel better if they did go a bit more aggressive. Charlie, I just want to go back to Smuckers, which you mentioned a moment ago. And one of the things that I, that I, th I think is, is so different maybe this time is that ordinarily, it's, yeah, absolutely, economy slowing, maybe consumer getting a little bit more choiceful, as Walmart likes to call it, you know, go to consumer staples. But post-pandemic, they all took so much price I just wonder if part of the unwind is going to be, you know, top line, maybe even EPS pressure. And I'm, and an analyst yesterday said for that reason, he prefers utilities over consumer staples and so forth. I mean, do you think that Smuckers could face those challenges? Yeah, you have to compare what you think is going to happen to what the market thinks is going to happen. And Smuckers was a very stable consumer staple company, leading positions in coffee and peanut butter and jelly. 
And so it used to trade at 17 times earnings. Right now it's trading at like 12 or 13 times earnings. It's wow. a very attractive stock at current levels in the place in the market where people go when they get a little tighter. Uh, they buy more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They drink Folgers instead of an unnamed retail coffee shop that I, I won't discuss here. So, um, we, no Smuckers, one is we drinking Folgers well instead of Starbucks. Do you? I mean, do you think that's a real possibility? I think people watch their uh, people are watching, and we're hearing this by the way from our portfolio companies that people are are moving down a little bit. They are being a little more cost sensitive, and one of the places they do that is by buying. Um, groceries in the in the store rather than at retail. 